Welcome to the Tuesday edition, the Holy Tuesday edition of the St. Mark Spark. I pray wherever you are viewing this today that you are well, that you are safe, that you are in the week that we are following Jesus from the triumphant entry to the Last Supper, to the cross, and to the hope of resurrection at the empty tomb. We are uh, going through every day and looking at what Jesus was doing or what we believe Jesus was doing on his last week uh, here on earth, at least the last week before his death on the cross and the resurrection. So our psalm today is from Psalm 71. It's, I'm going to start with verses 1 through 3, and then the, the end of our talk, I will pick up the rest of it. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me and rescue me. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be to me a rock, a rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me. For you are my rock and my fortress. May this God's word speak to our hearts, our minds, our spirits. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So we're getting back into Holy Week. We talked about on Sunday, it was the triumphant entry, the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. We talked uh, yesterday about the uh, cleansing of the temple. And so the question is, well, what happens on Tuesday? And so on Tuesday morning, what we believe happened is, is written by Scripture. There are a few things. It gets kind of quiet tomorrow on Wednesday before things certainly amp up on Thursday. But on Tuesday morning, Jesus and his disciples return again to Jerusalem. There is uh, an incident with a fig tree, and the fig tree that does not bear fruit, even though the season should be for bearing fruit, the, tr the tree is not doing what it's called to do, I guess. And so there is a, a cursing of the fig tree that it would never bear fruit again and that it withers it's really one of the more confusing parables and most difficult to maybe catch and to grasp and to teach. And so I'm not going to focus on that as much today. But a lot of things that are going on today in the story are things that are going on behind the scenes on this Tuesday. We have the religious elites, the spiritual authorities, and they are doing their best to, to try to trick Jesus. And so they work up these gotcha questions and these schemes to try to get Jesus to, to blaspheme or to, to answer a question wrongly. And so they ask certain questions that nobody would be really able to answer. But Jesus, in his wisdom, he answers these questions not with a direct answer, but sometimes with another question or sometimes with a better question, a challenge back to his accusers and those who are, are trying to get him to trip up. He's getting worked up at this point, too, because as he gets closer to the cross, not everybody knows what Jesus is doing, but Jesus understands what's happening. And as he gets closer to the cross, he's starting to recognize that his time is short and his temper is short as well. He refers to the, uh, the, the religious elites. He calls them snakes and hypocrites, and they're lawless, and they're sons of vipers, and, and says, how are they going to ever escape the judgments of hell? He's getting, clearly, he's, he, the time for any kind of nicety is, is gone. So that's what's going on during the day in Jerusalem in the temple. And then later on in the afternoon, Jesus takes the disciples up the Mount of Olives. And we have what is known as the Olivet Discourse. And this is a, a point where Jesus is looking at Jerusalem. He's looking at the temple. He is lamenting that uh, there will be destruction that will be happening, that there are lots of hard times up ahead for uh, the Jewish people and for Israel. Now, a lot of folks have looked at this and they've said, well, this is about the end times. This is about the second coming exclusively. This is uh, solely about uh, Armageddon and the eschaton, the completion of, of time. But also maybe a better way to look at it, at least through Jesus' eyes, and especially the first hearers of this and the first people who read these accounts, Jesus is talking about what's going to happen in 70 A.D., when the uh, there'll be a Jewish revolt, a rebellion, and there'll be a hard, hard, hard uh, Roman crackdown on the Jewish people. And so a lot of what we hear in the Gospels when it's talking about the temple being destroyed and, 
and not one stone being left upon another. Jesus is foretelling what's going to happen at 70 AD. We have to be very careful about trying to say that what we read in scripture, what was written in the first century, is transferable to the 21st century. So we have to be grounded in what was said, grounded in the context, and grounded in how the first century audience would hear that as well. At another time, we'll find more time to talk about the Olivet Discourse, about uh, questions about the second coming, about the final judgment. Also, the last thing to, to bring up, what we think happens today, it indicates, Scripture does, that this is the part where Jewish uh, Judas Iscariot is negotiating with the Sanhedrin, uh, the rabbinical court of ancient Israel, to betray Jesus. Now, this will come to uh, fruition in a couple of days on Monday, Thursday, but all this work that's being done behind the scenes uh, is happening during Holy Week. And so here we go to our scripture passage today. It is from the lectionary, not the daily lectionary, but the high holiday lectionary and holy day lectionary because all day, all throughout Holy Week we have different passages. And I'm going to read to you from John chapter 12. And we're going to pick up at verse uh, 22b and then go all the way through verse 33. So if you have scripture, read along with me. If not, May our eyes be open, our ears be open, our hearts be open to listen to God's word. Jesus is answering uh, Philip and the other disciples. He says, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a, wheat, a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life will lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled. And, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing have, had heard it there and they said it was thunder. Others said an angel has spoken to him. And Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. May this God's word speak to our hearts, our minds, our spirits. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is a hard passage, and the passages don't get easier as we get closer to the cross. Jesus knows what is in front of him, and he's trying to be more direct in saying to his disciples and those who have gathered, this is, this is the reality. You need to listen now because I'm not going to be with you forever. And Jesus says the time of the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. And then and then it's turned on its ear once more. To be glorified means to fall to earth, to die like a, a grain, to die like a seed. To be glorified means to be lifted up, lifted up to a cross. Now eventually you know that Jesus will be lifted up as he ascends into heaven and takes his seat at the right hand of the Father in heaven but there are so many painful words here maybe the hardest one is jesus saying my soul is troubled my soul is troubled it is diseased within within me it, it is it is it has come to a point where i can't i can't feel the, the normal way it's come to a point where where it is so difficult, this weight of what is ahead and what Jesus is shouldering. And he says, my soul is troubled. 
And then he has a rhetorical conversation. He says, should I ask to be saved from this hour? Should I ask to be rescued? Should I beg to be set free? He says, no. No, it is for this very reason that I have come to this hour. Jesus looks at what's ahead of him, at the betrayals and the, the denials, at the pain, at the scorn, at the cross. And he says, no, it is for this reason I have come to this hour, not to escape, but to embrace my destiny, even the hardness, should it be God's will and should it serve this greater purpose. Now for us, that's a very difficult thing. And it is for Jesus as well to say that at this difficult time, should we ask that it should pass? Or do we see that God has led us here, right here and right now for a time such as this? Are we praying the days will be over? Or are we saying, Lord, thy will be done. Use me in this minute, in this hour. Use me in this day because it is for you. It is for your glory you have placed me here right now. And then Jesus, the last thing I want to focus on is Jesus talking about seeds. He talks about seeds, and I don't know if you have, uh, if you've purchased seeds recently. We joked around with some friends about potentially having the need for a victory garden of sorts in our backyards. Uh, but when we think about seeds, Jesus says, unless they fall to the earth and die, they're just a seed. But if they do die, they bear much fruit. They bear much fruit because it's not just the seed anymore. It becomes a plant. And those plants become other plants. As, as you look out at the, the dandelions springing up in yards everywhere, you, you see dandelions exist to create more dandelions. Plants exist to create more plants, to have those seeds go out into the wind and to spread. There's a lot of farming imagery that Jesus uses. And uh, someone was asking me, knowing that I grew up on a farm recently, I grew up on a farm growing up, but they asked me recently, uh, they asked if we had corn or if we had soybeans or, or what we had. And I said, well, in Southwest Missouri, uh, we grow rocks and we grow plenty of them. The only, there are a lot of farms, but almost all the farms are dairy farms are are beef farms. And because at best what you can have, because the soil is so poor, for, for large farms, at best you can have is a family garden. If you put in the work, and you have to put in a lot of work, and we had one growing up, we had it for many years, and we had potatoes and onions and cucumbers, and we had fruit trees, and, and then as time takes over and, and other responsibilities uh, take a, our time away from the garden, well, it went fallow, and for many years, nothing grew in that garden because it had grown over except for one thing and that was zucchinis and we had zucchini upon zucchini zucchini begets zucchini and there was zucchini bread and there was uh, fried zucchini and and we had all kinds of squash dishes and the thing about the zucchini is what it reminds me of is that a good work done today a selfless act done today can be, fee can be food for other people and support for other people for years to come. We have to recognize that there is abundance. There is abundance all around us because Jesus says, I choose you. Jesus says, I'm going to call all people to myself. Jesus says that the disciples are going to be near him. And when we are near Jesus, we are closer to that abundance, which is life that is truly life. This is at the heart of Jesus' ministry. This is at the heart of what we're moving towards in Holy Week. Our closing psalm, our closing benediction is continuing from Psalm 71 verses 12 through 14. Listen as God speaks to God's word. O oh God, do not be far from me. O oh my God, make haste to help me. Let my accusers, accusers be put to shame and consumed let those who seek to hurt me be covered with scorn and disgrace. But I will hope, I will hope continually and will praise you yet more and more and more. May God bless this reading and may God bless you this day. 
as we seek to be closer to Jesus in difficult times and hard times, knowing that it is for days like this that God has placed us on this earth. And as we are closer to Jesus, the one who was for everyone, may we seek to serve and love and care for our neighbors this day and every day. May God bless you.